Hello, welcome to day 21 of our Family Connections experiment. We've made it through three weeks of connecting with our families. I was like, wait, made it through. That kind of sounds like it was a hard thing, but it's a fun thing, right? We got to go through three weeks of connecting with our families, and we are here today with some very talented ladies um, with Stacy Risenmay and Melissa Esplin, and I'm going to let them uh, share a little bit more about themselves in a moment. Today, we're going to talk about how we can creatively connect with with our families. I think sometimes when we hear the word family history, we think pedi pedigree charts and research, but really it is so much more. I've heard a little bit of Stacy's and Melissa's stories, and I know that you are going to love them. So um, before I have them tell about themselves, um, if you're watching, when you're watching, go ahead and tell us where you're from, and then let us know if you have any questions for them. Go ahead and put them in the comments, and we'll give them to them to answer at the end. So let's dive right in. Um, I'm going to start with Melissa. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Melissa Esplin. I'm a calligrapher, and um, I'm, I'm a local of Utah. I live in Draper, Utah. I've been in Utah pretty much my whole life. And I, um, I've got three kids. I like to mountain bike, road bike, and now motorcycle. <laughs> We're just adding things with two wheels to our quiver. I love it. That's awesome. I have actually never rode a motorcycle before. So that is like, that's very exciting. That's very fun. Uh, it's a riot. Yeah, awesome. And um, Stacy, go ahead and introduce yourself. So I'm Stacy, and I have been a home decor DIY blogger for the past 10 years. And I am a mom to four boys and too many animals to count. And I just love sharing anything and everything that has to do with the home and the garden inside and out. Awesome, thank you. Now I met both Stacy and Melissa a couple of years ago um, at a at a blogging conference, a creativity conference, and um, and I loved it. Even though they're very creative people, um, I like Melissa talked about a little bit about family history in her class, and I know Stacy has some blog posts that just really resonated with me as someone who loves family, who loves family history. So we're going to be looking at how these creative ladies and their talents, how that connects with family history. So let's dive in with um, with the questions. Um, so Melissa, you are very talented at uh, calligraphy and art. Um, how about you share with us um, how can calligraphy match up with um, with family history? Tell us a little bit more about that. Oh, my gosh. So many ways. It's really exciting. So learning calligraphy, learning the essentials of the letter forms, it really actually helps you understand and be able to read some of those old documents that you have that have been passed down from family to family. So I, I think in that regard, it's really important that you actually know how to read each um, of your ancestors' handwriting. You actually have an understanding of the um, history and like the evolve evolution of um, letters, because like the letter P has evolved so many different ways. So has the S and the F. So it's kind of, it's really helpful in that regard. But for me personally, um, calligraphy turns out to my blood. Um, my great, great grandfather was a calligrapher and sign painter in Ogden, Utah. And I was able to uh, inherit a couple of his pieces, one of his pen holders and one of his resource books that he used back like in the 1800s like way oh like a long time ago so it's really cool to feel that connection of like what i do today versus what he did back then um and having that kind of connection with old family members that you've never met that you don't really know very much about it it's so invaluable to feel that like you, uh, family history is super boring unless you feel some kind of connection unless you can find a way to connect who you are today the struggles you have today with who your ancestors were and what they struggled with. Mm -hmm. I, I love that. And I think you hit it right on the nail. You have to find out what, um, 
uh, connects with you. Like I love saying like, come as you are and do what you love. Like don't do the boring stuff, do what you're excited about. And I loved, I hadn't even really thought about um, a calligraphy as as a tool. Like I'm, I'm learning um, how to read German letters. And I'm like, wait, that is calligraphy too. If I knew yeah. how to draw them, I'd probably know how to read them. So I love that, like, that's very practical. That's awesome. I hadn't made that connection before. And I love that your grandfather, your great grandfather was, uh, um, that he was a sign, a sign painter. And then you have the book, like, that's really cool to me, knowing that you have the book. Very fun. I'm, I'm excited about these stories. Um, now, Stacy, you said you're a designer and a DIYer. Um, how have you found uh, family history to connect with, with those passions that you have? Well, I'm a big believer that when you are decorating your home, that you should surround yourself with things that you love, that have meaning. And so I love to have like all going down my stairway and in my office and in the downstairs, I have gallery walls everywhere with photos of family members going back to great grandparents. And I just, I want my kids, especially those ancestors that they have not had a chance to meet, like, for example, my dad passed away when I was a teenager, so not even my husband has had the opportunity to meet him in real life. So I want them to see and be able to put faces to the stories. I also love using, um, you know, heirlooms and things that um, remind you of, like, for example, my dad was a milkman um, for Meadow Gold, and so I have glass, the old-fashioned glass um, milk bottles that um that he when he first started Kevin when he first started um delivering milk it was in the glass bottles and so I'll use those as vases and just kind of tuck them here and there so anything that has you know personal meaning that is a piece of your story that can kind of just be a little reminder you know I think that we need to surround ourselves with things that make us smile and remember mm -hmm. I love that. The things that bring back um, the memories and, um, and I loved how you, um, it sounds like you kind of thought outside of the box. Like, did you already have the milk bottles from my mom? When he did it. Your mom had some? My mom had some. That she oh, cool. Had. So they're the actual heirlooms. So I was thinking you could go out and look for those or check eBay for things like yeah, that. Yeah, and, and I do. I have some things that are replicas. My dad had a brass statue on his desk that I was always enamored with and my mom didn't have it anymore and so eBay to the rescue I was able to find an the exact statue so it doesn't have to be the exact thing you know yeah well I love that it's the memories and the reminders um like sometimes I you know we feel like we have to be telling and teaching our children but really we can be like just showing and like piquing their curiosity with photos and um and those cool pieces of of furniture that we have in our house i love that i love that so much and we're gonna put up a, a blog post because i know you have a blog post about this um so we're gonna put up that link so they can go check out some of the cool items like i was really crushing on your mom's couch like should this cool like that turquoise couch like yeah my mom, our whole house was filled with antiques just because my mom and i think that's where i get it from she just loved everything that old things had stories even if she didn't know all of the background or the story behind it she just loved being surrounded by things that had a past and stories behind it mm -hmm. Oh, that's so fun. I love it. Um, now, you guys have alluded to this next question a little bit already. Uh, Melissa, with your great-grandfather, and Stacy with your parents. Um, have there been um, family members or ancestors who have inspired you, and and why? We'd love to hear a little bit more about those stories. Um, we'll start with Melissa. So, th there are a couple of ancestors that have really inspired me um the first being um jesse anderson he, um and just the legacy of having that calligraphy passed down was really really cool jesse anderson was actually 
the wife and she's the one who kept all those things because her husband died really young. So that was, that was like really special to have those. The other one is um, my great, great grandfather. So another great, great, he, um, his name is Brigham Morris Young and he's a direct son of Brigham Young. And oh, wow. he's, he's a fun one. I actually learned about him when I was in seventh grade. I had to do like a project. My grandma told me all about him. My grandma like actually has a picture with Brigham Morris Young. And it's just kind of like this crazy mind thing. Like she took a picture with her grandpa who was the son of Brigham Young. Like it's mm -hmm. just what, like the, it shortens the generation. And we have but, it now. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So Brigham Morris Young was famously known as um, Madame Paterini. He had this um, this alter ego, Madame Paterini. <laughs> Madame Paterini. He dressed up like full regalia in like this crazy female costume with like this umbrella cane. And like there's a picture on the internet if you search for it. And I, he played practical jokes on Lorenzo Snow and some of these early members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And I love that he just like, he did what he wanted. He yeah. wasn't, he wasn't like trying to be cool or anything like that. And um, he was embraced by the community. He was actually honored by starting the Young Men's Association. And he, he played a really vital role in his own community and he did it his own way. So that is something that I've learned that I can do things my own way and still be embraced by my own community. And I think that just, that translates so well to today when we feel like we have to fit a certain mold or be a certain way that we don't and we shouldn't. I, lo I love that. I love that so much because it goes from being a name when you described him, like I'm just picturing it in my mind and he just comes alive. Like I knew Brigham Young had children, but I didn't know they played pranks on Lorenzo Snow. Right? And <laughs> it's fun. I love, that it. Makes, I love it. It makes history come alive. And I like that would be a fun report to do in seventh grade. <laughs> You got to find okay. those those uh, exciting, exciting ancestors. But really, I think when we dig deep enough, we find most our ancestors have some bit of story. Everyone has a story that they can oh, share. Yeah. Yeah. And I loved what you said um, about Jesse Anderson, too. Um, so it was the calligrapher who died young, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was him. Yes. And, and so I'm forgetting his name right now, but his wife is the one who kept everything and like... Yes felt that that was important enough to pass down, which I love. And and that, I feel like that's such an important role in family history too. We have to have like the gatherers and the preservers and the, we, we need, we, we need everybody. <laughs> we need everybody's talents, whatever, whatever they are, the calligraphers. Um, so important. And I am totally going to look up Brigham Morris. Yeah. I'm like, or should I look up Madden? Paterini, like Madame which Paterini be, is a riot. I mean, either one, you'll find both of them. Which one will be most fun? <laughs> I want to look at Paterini. their family search, their family <laughs> search profile now too. I hope it's on there with the stories. If not, that's your job to put it on there okay. with the stories. <laughs> All we'll right, do. so we'll, we'll jump over um, to to Stacy. What ancestors have inspired you? So my great um, grandparents on my mom's side. Um, lived through the Great Depression, and they totally embodied the whole use it up, wear it out, make it do or do without. And they just couldn't have been more thrifty or frugal. And that's how they kept their business alive. They had a restaurant. That's how they, you know, were able to, and they kept that even when times were better. And then, you know, their daughter, my grandma, um, lived through the war and had to really, you know, save, um, save things because resources were scarce and went to work in a, in a factory. And so just that whole like thrifty um, mentality and has really trickled down, you know, to my mom and to, to me. And so I feel like that that has shaped who I am and how I live. And I, I, that's why I DIY. It's so much, you know, cheaper to do it myself and to make everything. And 
Um, I also garden and bottle and can and all the things. And I, I really want my kids to learn all of those skills. I kind of feel like they're fast becoming lost arts. Um, all I have all boys, but they all know how to can. They know how to sew. That's amazing. They know how to grow a garden. They know how to, you know, build things and fix things. And I just, I want all those skills. So not just memories, but a way of life and skills and things to be passed down as well. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Well, and I know that they're doing really good at that. Um, I remember, I think Stacy posted on social media a while back, her son built like, uh, it, it, it was like his own house, like a fort kind of a thing. And it was amazing. It was way better than anything I ever attempted. Like it looked like something the pioneers would have built. Yeah, so. his, his whole goal was he <laughs> wanted to only use hand tools and only use items that he was able to gather and find. And he was just bound and determined to learn how they did it back in the day. And so, I don't know, I'm sure I didn't, I didn't, that was not my idea. That was his, but I'm sure that that was probably, you know, in part because of, of conversations and things. Yeah. So. Well, and I think that totally counts as family history too, yeah. and as history and as like pure survival skills. Like yeah. as you were talking, I was thinking like all of those things you mentioned, like those are things we've really needed this like last year in the pandemic, like frugality and make, making do and like when there was there was no like I like having a hard time finding flour and stuff last year like sometimes the grocery stores were out of things and so I love that we can draw on those stories and and I love the multi-generational aspect too with your great great grandparents down to your sons like that's really awesome and that they can can I cannot can so that is super impressive they're gonna have very lucky spouses someday <laughs> I know. I hope, they, I hope they continue to garden and can when they get married. That's the hope. Yeah. Well, they they've got the skills, so they'll, so they'll do well. So um, so both of you are very busy. You have children. You have um your work and your passions. What um advice would you have maybe for um? I guess this is a couple part question. What advice do you have for someone who doesn't consider themselves to be creative or maybe they don't have time to be creative? And then what advice would you give to someone who's, who doesn't consider themselves to be a family historian? I mean, would you ladies consider yourselves to be family historians? I guess that's a lot of questions in one. I'm just gonna toss them your way. Um, Stacy, do you wanna start this time? Sure. Well, I would have never considered myself a family historian before this experience, but in thinking about what we were going to talk about today, and I was like, I guess I am. I'm passing down stories and skills. And so I feel like we all do it to some level, just naturally. It's like our natural inclination to want to, to share that with our family. So and as far as the creativity, I think everyone is creative in their own way. There's so many different creative outlets. You know, gardening is a creative outlet. I'm sure everyone plants flowers in their yard. You have to figure out what looks best here and there and where to put it. And I mean, there's, I think everyone is more creative than maybe what they give themselves credit for. But even making a meal is a creative outlet and we all do that. <laughs> Some of my meals are more creative than others. <laughs> and my kids tell me so. <laughs> they let me know. <laughs> but I but I love that. Like creativity doesn't have to look a certain way. Family history doesn't have to look a certain way. Um cuz I I don't consider myself a super creative person, but I love like learning new things. Like I'm I'm totally going to try writing the German handwriting now. Like I'm that's going to be my do. goal. That is going to be my goal. So we'll transition over to Melissa with the same with that same question. I'm going to echo what Stacy said. Everyone's creative, and I think we are born with a natural creative propensity. Like we have to be creative. That's part of this existence, and the point of this this existence is to create things of value, and they're always so different. Um, <clears throat> as far as I mean, I feel like we all contribute in a, such a different way. And so the family history 
contributions are also going to be very different. And one of the things that I really personally love to do is journal. Um, and I, I do kind of, have you guys seen Last Man on Earth? It's, it's like not. Maybe. Is it like in space? They're in space? No, in it's, space? Or not, it's or a just on comedy. Earth? It's a comedy. Okay. It was, I think I watched it on Hulu or something. Anyway, it's basically this guy and like there was a virus that wiped out the whole earth in 2020 and this is him after it, which is kind of funny because it aired that in like happened. 2018. So, oh, no. um, <laughs> yeah, right? Foreshadow. So, <laughs> right? So he finds this woman, they end up like getting married or whatever they did, you know, post-apocalyptic, whatever. And she, you know, of course they don't have like photo printers or anything like that. So she creates this scrapbook um, by drawing everything that happened. And oh my I've actually taken a lot of inspiration from that. Like, oh, okay. Instead mm -hmm. of having to go to the print op, you know, center and getting them printed and doing these elaborate scrapbooking layouts and put them in the 12 by 12s and this whole thing, I just get a journal and I, you know, I, I pull up photos from whatever it was that we did and I'll quickly try and draw it out. And and then I'll write some blurbs on there. And that's that's part of my journaling. I'll journal what I take home from church on Sundays. And but it's the, the thing is, is journaling can look so different for everybody. And I think journaling is really important. I think writing even just a couple sentences down makes such a huge difference. And you don't have to journal every day. You don't have to journal every week. Just write something down when you when like the opportunity strikes. Don't allow this like pressure of family history to keep you from journaling even sporadically um mm -hmm. when like the pandemic initially hit my aunt found a journal entry from a great great aunt um her she like documented one tiny little paragraph about the 1918 spanish flu oh cool and it wasn't anything like earth shattering it didn't like it, it was just like this little blurb that she lived through it and for some reason that just brought me personally so much comfort knowing okay it's okay like we've got this so mm -hmm. it, you know she wasn't very skilled journal journaler she didn't write every day it wasn't this big pr prophetic thing she just wrote something down and that made an impact so that's the thing that i want to express to anybody who's thinking about documenting, it doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be crazy. It just has to be you and just mm -hmm. do it when, when you can. Yeah. I, that, that resonates with me so much. And it's such a good, it's such a good reminder. Like when we're, when we're looking for things about our ancestors, like we do get excited about paragraphs and sentences and, you know, even like addresses or just a name. Sometimes it's just a name. So I love what you said about like releasing the the pressure that it has to be this big, giant, like complicated thing. It can just like, I'm going to write it down. We're going to have to go back and write it down that it can just be you like do do the parts that you love. I think that's so awesome. That's so good. And I love all these tidbits, all these all these stories um, and, and and how they can. Uh, help us like because it's crazy it's still i feel it's still like we're feel, still having crazy times in 2021 so <laughs> hopefully we have more ancestor stories to to draw from well and what you said leads perfectly into the next um question uh what what benefits have you seen in your own life through making these um connections whether creatively or through family history um what, what benefits have you seen? If it can be psychological, it can be, um, it can even be like social. <laughs> We'd love to hear. So we'll go back over to uh, Stacy. Oh, uh -oh. you're still on mute. Oh, I got you on mute. You're fine. Darn dog barking. <laughs> That's just life. Um, well, the first thing that comes to mind is just like how I said, my dad passed away before I got married and had kids. And because of telling stories and showing and ha having pictures and stuff, I feel like they have a sense of who he was and his personality. And one day when they get to 
to meet, I feel like they will know each other, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I feel like my kids have a connection with the, sorry, with the people that have passed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's, that's beautiful. And I think that's something that everyone is looking for. Like we all want to to be connected with others and to be part of something bigger than our than ourselves. And I know studies have shown that and then your own experience with your sons and your dad. Um, that Yeah, so I, I think that's so, um, like I said before, I think that's beautiful. It's wonderful. Um, and then what, uh, what do you think, Melissa? <laughs> I, yes. Uh, amen, Stacy. <laughs> um, I think I think it gives us a clearer vision of who we are, and it creates this inner peace, understanding um, a little bit more of the human experience, the human connection. I, it, it's invaluable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, and I and I and I love that, and it's something that we can all do because we're all here. <laughs> We're all here. We all have um, families and, and every family looks different. Every version of family history is going to look different. Um, so there's a part that we can all play. I think that's um, that's so cool. Um, so we've covered we've covered a lot of like a lot of good things today. Um, I feel like we've kind of laughed and we've cried and <laughs> I could talk to you ladies like forever. But um I want to know, is there anything that we haven't covered that you would like um, to cover here at the end? Any, um, any, any, any other stories? If there's a story that's inspired you or, a, um, or any last tips? Um, Melissa, do you want to go first on this one? Sure. Any tips or stories? You know, I think my, my grandpa on my dad's side, has done a really good job of creating binders of his own life, his uh, late wife, my late grandmother's wife, life, and um, talking about the trials that they've ha endured. My grandpa moved out on his own at age 14. Uh -huh. And um, he had a really rough childhood. And, you know, seeing, seeing that, seeing his experiences, reading through them, and just like being able to have like a hard copy compilation of his life while he's living, while he's alive, he's still alive. Um, and that's just so great to know that he, it's important for him to tell stories. And sometimes it's hard to tell those stories, those hard stories of trials and hardships. But I think it's really important because we're all dealing with something fierce always. So um, I think sharing the hard things is really, really important. Yeah, and I feel like sometimes it's those hard things that bring us together and make it, I, I don't know, I feel like it makes things more doable. Like they did it. All right. We can, we can, we can do it too. Um, Cause our ancestors were not, we're not perfect. <laughs> Nobody's perfect. Um, but there's so much we can learn from them and, and pass on. So I love that. And then we'll go over yeah. to Stacey. Um, so several years ago, my mom started for our Christmas, part of our Christmas gift every year, she compiles um, basically her life story. And so we just get a few little chapters every year with photos. And she started, you know, with her grandparents and have kind of worked her way back down. But it's because she and there's so much in there that she thought she told us, but she didn't because it's in her head. and She thinks that she conveyed that information but then I'll be like mom I never heard this story I've never seen these pictures I've never you know and and so I love that she's doing that now well you know so she can take her time and you know and get through it all and I want to do the same thing for my kids because I'm sure that there's a lot up in here that I have not conveyed to my kids that I maybe think that I have and so getting it all down on paper is you know a goal of mine at some point to add to her story because she's kind of done the hard work and done, you know, from grandparents on. And then I can just add mine to what she gives us and my husband can add his. And anyway, then we can get it all out and make sure that the kids have heard. And it's the kids job after that. <laughs> you just like pass it on. 
But I think that's so fun that she's done that. And what a great, like, Christmas tradition. I know I would look forward. To, I would personally look forward to that every every year, the pictures and, like, who – well, I was like, I guess some people might not look, like looking at, at childhood pictures, but I love them. I love going back and, and looking at those, like, I say crazy 80s. <laughs> I date myself, the crazy 80s pictures and things. And I think it's so fun, um, as you guys have been talking, to know that there's, like, just these little, and I say the niches, is that right? Niches, niches for, for everyone, whether you're a kid building a fort or, um, you know, a mom writing in her journal or a grandma wanting to pass on um, her memories of her grandparents. Um, we need all those those connections. Like, I, I, I'm thinking back to what Melissa said about um, the picture of her grandma with her, Brigham was the grandpa, right? Like, and it, I think it makes those connections seem that much closer to us. Mm -hmm. And I love it. Thank you, ladies, so much for sharing your your talents and your creativity with us. I've loved hearing your, your stories and your heart. Like, it just comes through in what you guys have shared with us. And I feel like family history feels a little bit more doable. And I'm going to look up Madame Matarini. <laughs> We can have fun with family history, too. So thank you so much, Stacy. Thank you, Melissa. Um, thank you. Before we, oh, you are welcome. We're so happy to have you. I was going to say, we put the social media for Stacy and Melissa in the comments, and um, we're going to put up their website so you can go and check them out. Check out the calligraphy. Check out the DIY stuff. So many, so many good things. Oh, we just had another question come in from Camille. It's a good one, so I'm going to toss it up. She says, is there a point when you have too many sentimental items in your home? <laughs> well, my job growing up was to dust. So I'm going to say yes. <laughs> because I had to take down all the knickknacks and dust each one and then dust the surface and then put them back up. But no, I'm glad now that I'm an adult, I'm glad my mom has kept a lot of that stuff. But in my own home, I am a little bit more of a minimalist than my mother was. But is. Well, that's okay. You've curated what is important to you. So that's, that's perfect. I loved it. I thought that was a fun question. I saw that right as we were getting ready to wrap up. So I had to put it Oops, there we go. All right, so there we have the websites, we have social, and then I wanted to let everyone know that we're gonna be having an after party tonight at seven o'clock where we're wrapping up our, um, our April plan and we're gonna be introducing ways to connect in May. And I think everyone's gonna love it because it is easy and simple and fun. So with that, we'll sign off and thank you again, Stacy and Melissa. It was so good talking with you guys. Thank you.